Do you guys have a way to maintain the operation of security cameras, medical equipment, maybe even a refrigerator during a power outage? And by the way, this is an awesome Benchmade triage I'm using to open this box, by the way. I've carried this thing at work for as long as I can remember. Highly recommended. But when that power does go out, and I think people are getting used to the idea that our grid is more vulnerable than we have previously thought. It could be hours, days, or even weeks until it's restored. ERCOT over in Texas just warned residents that there is a high risk of rolling blackouts due to high heat and increased energy consumption in the coming weeks. I'm going to show you a relatively inexpensive way with this Blue Eddy EB3A to maintain some vital systems during an outage. And good morning guys, Essential Gear here. I'm really happy with the progress on the channel right now. Almost 50 subscribers. That's crazy to me. So big shout out to all of you guys that have hit that little red button. Thanks for coming along for the ride. I've got a lot of good stuff coming. And if you are new here, welcome. I've been talking on the internet for about two months now. The channel focuses on skills and things that will make your life easier in the months and years to come. So back up power supplies. Now, full disclosure, I'm not trying to pass myself off as an expert when it comes to the subject, so consider this more of a regular guy's view on why you would want a device featuring UPS. So UPS stands for Uninterrupted Power Supply. This is a way to prevent the loss of power to a device or system when the grid goes down. Now, you want to consider something like this if you have a family member that relies on a medical device needing power, or maybe you have a camera system that you always want on, which is my intended use. So let's get this box open and go over some of the specs and limitations of this EB3A. I think it would be appropriate to go over some expectations with this unit. It is the smallest one that Blue Eddy makes, and it's geared more towards charging smaller devices like laptops, cameras, drones, but will also run a CPAP machine for about nine hours. This is not the unit to get to run appliances or larger things in your house. I'll be going over how to do that in a future video. You'll be considering this unit for the UPS features for small devices or the portability that it provides for weekend trips or camping. It's only about 10 pounds. So the only thing that you get in the box is the charging cable, the unit itself, and the paperwork. Probably how they are keeping the cost down, which was $249 at the time of filming. Something to keep in mind if you are going to pair this with a solar panel, which is really the only way it makes sense, or charge this in your car, you're going to have to get the cable separately. One good thing about the cable it comes with is that it's just a cable, no big charging brick. Now with that cable, you will be able to fast charge the unit at a max rate of 260 watts in just over an hour, which is pretty cool. So features, the battery is a 268 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which basically means you will get more charge cycles out of this unit and faster charge times than some other competitive offerings on the market. Now they're advertising 2,500 charge cycles compared to competitors like Jackery, which are only about 500. So for my research, this is the battery you want if you plan to use it regularly. I guess I should mention as well, the website says you can charge the unit to 80% in 30 minutes with the fast charging mode. But I've read that will stress the battery a bit more, so I probably won't do that. And they actually say it'll charge it in the time it takes to have a cup of coffee or a little chit chat. Exact words there. The Blue Yeti turns on by pressing any of the three power buttons. And you do have to make sure that AC or DC green light is on to get an output. There are two USB ports, a USB-C port, a cigarette lighter plug, and then two 12-volt barrel connectors for the DC section. Now I found that the USB-C port charged my 13-inch MacBook Pro just fine a couple of times over. My only complaint is that the cigarette plug is quite loose. I'm not sure if it's common or if anybody else has had this problem, but you might be able to fix that with an adapter. Moving on to the AC outlets, you do get two 120-volt, 600-watt plugs. Then there is also a light on the front with three functions, low, high, and then SOS mode. Actually, a really long SOS mode. The display is good. It shows you how much power you have going in versus out, and then hours remaining with current usage. So good information there. But it turns off after about 30 seconds, so you have to keep pressing that or any of the buttons to keep the display on if you want to look at it. 
It also has a 15 watt wireless charging pad on the top, and it's actually pretty convenient. I'm gonna keep this thing in my office acting as a UPS for my camera system, and I found that I just end up putting my phone on top most of the time to charge. It has an app that you can use with it, but it's Bluetooth, so it is a bit limited in range. It would be nice if it supported Wi-Fi connectivity. So the app allows you to monitor power usage, change some settings, and update the firmware from your phone. So back to that UPS feature. So to activate this, you're gonna plug the Blue Eddy into the wall like you're charging it, and then plug whatever device you want backup power to into the Blue Eddy. That UPS light will display, and the power will flow from the wall to the Blue Eddy to your device. When the power goes out, the internals of the unit will recognize this and maintain power to whatever device you've selected. Now I tested this with a 12 volt fridge because I have no way of using it on my camera system without showing you what kind of system I have, but the concept is the same. You can even plug your computer into this because it is rated for sensitive electronics requiring pure sine wave output. With this unit being 268 watts, it did run that fridge for about six and a half hours, which really isn't too bad because this unit is really geared towards smaller electronic devices. And that was inside where the room air was about 75 degrees. Now I also did test this in my truck, or really the bed of my truck, where it was about 89 degrees. And it lasted just over six hours, so a little decrease in function there. As far as the noise goes with this little unit, I would say it's negligible. It's really not loud enough to bother most people. So wrapping this thing up, I think this unit is going to be for you if you're just getting into the game or need a highly portable power supply that can be charged and used at the same time. If nothing else, you'll be able to charge your comm system or your radios just so you can maintain information flow in the case of a blackout. It's not terribly expensive. You can take it on your weekend trips. And when it's paired with a solar panel, I think you'll be relatively self-sufficient. Speaking of solar panels, I don't have one for this unit yet, so I'll do an update when it comes and I finish some testing on it. So think about how you can develop a plan or implement a system around this concept if you haven't already. For me, having this unit power my security camera system will just give me time to observe what's going on during an outage. Then I can decide what to do next. Maybe I'll start the big generator or go another route. 1000 foot view approach. And here's a sneak peek of this 12 volt fridge I've been looking at. I'll be putting out a video on that next week. All right, guys, that's all for now. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And don't be strangers. Essential gear out.